If you don't know me, I'm Fit Greek. I am retired military. I've done 16 bikini bodybuilding shows and I qualified for bikini nationals and was a, well, I'm a retired personal trainer, meaning I don't train people. I don't got time for that. And went to school for nutrition and decided to bump that set. Subscribe, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in a little bit. But today's video is just a little bit how to show you how you can um, main gain through an off season. Yes, I am on my off season. Off season means to me and should be a staple across the board is that you're not doing any shows, but you're still in prep. And that's exactly what it is. People, ooh, I gotta, y'all, I gotta pick the hair. Oh, okay. Off season to most bodybuilders means like, oh, yay, I can stop prepping and just let everything out the door. All of my hard work from the last season is just out the door. So my team, um, right now, currently I'm not with them, but they're always going to be my team because I go on and off with them. Um, but they brought me in looking a hella good. They pretty much like had to strip my body down of fat and remold me. And I want to keep that molding happening because I couldn't do it by myself. So I was very grateful for my coach. And so um, it's been great. So with that being said, I had hard ass work. I don't wanna let that go. So I am off season. I am not doing any shows. I was gonna do the Steve Carr in Vegas, November 5th. And then I'm like, what the heck? Why am I doing a regional show in Vegas if I qualified for bikini? So then I was going to do the Arizona Rising Phoenix, which is all female competitors on November 5th out in Chandler. I'm like, why the hell am I doing another one original if I already qualified for bikini? So it was like money out the door if I didn't need to and prep that I didn't need to or cut, I should say, if I'm in a growing stage. So with that being said, right now I am main gaining. To main gain only means to add 50 to 100 calories. And that's exactly what my coach did for me post-surgery and post-show. So with that being said, I'm going to show you how to lift heavy and get a great glute workout and a great leg workout in. And yeah, we got to match the back to this back and they need to be conditioned so that when I go to hit my back pose, they are not staring at my back, but they're looking at my glutes. And when I say to condition, it means to, as you build muscle, you will lose fat. So I need to get my glutes way more conditioned and more tight. They are tight, but they can be tighter, meaning to grow a little bit more. And they've been growing and I feel the muscle. I just need to fill out the muscle even more by growing them. So with that being said, it's just been a lot more, uh, for me, more reps at a reasonable weight. There's no reason to throw around heavy weight and upset your joints, especially if you're working three legs and three upper body six days a week. And yeah, so I'll see you guys at the gym. And yeah. Hey, you guys, welcome back to my workout. This is our 15 minute cardio session. I do this to activate my glutes. You have to ask yourself. Is a muscle better to work when it's contracted or when it's relaxed? And the answer is actually contracted. You have to think when you're in midway through your workout, you get a better workout versus if you're just starting off, you're waking up your muscles. So this is what I do to activate my glutes so that I am not forced to activate quads first. Glutes first, then quads. Okay, you guys, so while my glutes are nice and contracted, we're going to jump on to the kickbacks. We're doing heavy because glutes, quads, and hamstrings can handle heavy weights. So we're doing eight reps, four sets, a total of 32. So in order to do this exercise properly, you need to 
push through the heel, squeezing the glute. If you do not do that, you'll end up in the hip flexor, and you don't want to do that. But your lower extremities can handle heavier weights versus your upper extremities, such as shoulders. You might want to think about going lower weights and higher reps. But I love this exercise because it's unilateral and you can really focus in on what is weaker, either your left or your right side. Okay, you guys. So right now we're doing just deadlifts with the barbell. It's 70 pounds. Honestly, it wasn't heavy, but it was a nice superset in between heavy and the lightweight reinforcing the hinge movement. Most people don't do these properly because they don't push the glute back. As you can see through the pants, I am pushing back, hinge at the pelvis, and pulling my glutes forward as I'm thrusting forward. Hinge and pull forward and squeeze the glutes. So I love this exercise because it really gives you a good perspective on that hinge movement. As you can see, you push back, pushing through the heels and thrusting forward. My left side has a better accent on this exercise than my right. Okay, you guys, so next we're doing the ballerina flamingo. I have coined this. You're going into a squat, pulling in, and it's like you're lunging to the side, pulling up with your glute as a, you do a posterior tilt. Yes, there's a lot to think of while you're doing this. Pelé, pull in, plie, pull in, and as you do that, you're pulling in with the leg that is on the floor. So in this case, I am working my left glute. You have to work, and this is the profile, so squat, pull squats and you're pulling in you're using this right glute to posterior tilt to get that hamstring tight in and I love this exercise because again it, you can superset it in and it also helps reinforce that posterior tilt that no one ever gets okay so the next exercise old school abductors You're moving away from the midline of the body. So when you move anything away from the midline of the body, it is always going to have more resistance. So because it has more resistance and it is your lower body, you can go heavier, but you have to be careful. You have to do it properly. You have to push through the heels and actually use those knees. You want to move the weight with your knees, and that's how I think about it as I squeeze my medial and my minimus glute muscles. And when you push through the toes, you'll hit the max part of the glute. Next exercise is of course the hip thrust. Everyone loves doing this, but they don't do it right. You have to do a posterior tilt as you are thrusting and it's the hardest thing to do if you're not physically and mentally there. You need to picture that you're pushing the metal board away as you are lifting your glutes and squeezing the whole time. Okay, you guys, so we're actually going on to the prone hamstring curl machine. I am actually going in with hip thrust at 70 pounds and we're alternating between heavy and light. Heavy as in glute, hip thrust, and then the light to reinforce that with the hamstring curls. As you see, there is no gappage, hardly any gappage when I am lifting and curling my hamstrings. I see a lot of people go so heavy and their whole body is just gapping from the pad. So I always rule of thumb, never ever allow the weight to re-stack. Hence, keeping tension on the muscle. Right here, you can kind of see where I'm making sure my hips stay in the pad. But I hope you enjoyed this workout, and I'll see y'all soon. Road to Nationals.